After the rapture, millions of people from every country on the planet will disappear instantly without a trace. People on Earth will be in a severe state of confusion, and one person will use this shock as yet another pretext to become the world leader described in Revelation. Since 2017, all media and politicians on the planet have been conducting an uninterrupted campaign about establishing a single world leader. This appeal has gained even more strength from 2020, and the Bible had already predicted exactly all these events. The Holy Bible describes this person as charismatic and will be hailed as the long-awaited powerful mediator of the world and the Messiah. When the world leader comes to power, he will do four things. Sign a peace agreement with Israel. Implement a mark without which no one can buy or sell. Establish a universal basic income and promote a world currency. Sign the peace agreement with Israel. Just imagine a scenario where the pieces of the geopolitical chessboard begin to move in ways we've never seen before. We're talking about a peace agreement, not just any agreement, but one that has the power to change the course of history, especially for Israel. And at the center of this diplomatic whirlwind is the world leader, a leader who emerges with the support of media and politicians worldwide, capturing the world's attention and adoration. Daniel 9.27 gives us details about this event, mentioning a covenant that will be made for a week, but here we're not talking about seven literal days. We're delving into a prophecy that speaks of years, a period that will be marked by a precarious peace. This leader, this diplomatic enthusiast, is someone who, at first glance, seems to have the best intentions. He manages to do the unthinkable, sign a peace agreement with Israel. Can you imagine the relief, the hope, and even the euphoria that something like this could generate? For a moment, it seems that all the conflicts, all the tensions that have plagued Israel and the region, could find an end. But there's more to it than meets the eye. This agreement, this covenant, is not the triumph of diplomacy that many would think it to be. Daniel warns us that, in the middle of this week, in the midst of this seven-year period, something terrible happens. The same leader who was hailed as a hero as the architect of peace will reveal himself as anything but. The abomination of desolation, an act that desecrates the sacred and reveals the true nature of this leader, is enacted, tearing the veil of peace and showing the sinister intentions behind it. Now think about the impact of this. A leader who manages in an instant to completely change the narrative, from peacemaker to profaner. The world, which once hailed him, now finds itself deceived, betrayed by someone in whom they placed their hope and faith. The Antichrist's ability to mask his true intentions and manipulate the masses is something that elicits both fascination and horror. How can someone be so convincing as to unite nations under a global banner, and now war? For when they say, peace and safety, then sudden destruction comes upon them, as labor pains upon a pregnant woman, and they shall not escape. To implement a mark without which no one can buy or sell. Revelation 13, 16, 17 says, and he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand, or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. Here the Bible describes a not-so-distant future event. This technology already exists, and we are witnessing laws being changed and other actions being executed, even though there are laws prohibiting it. The text describes a figure of power, the false prophet, who forces everyone, great and small, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hand or on their forehead. Without this mark, no one can buy or sell. Can you imagine a society where your ability to participate in the economy, to live your daily life, depends on a mark you carry on your body? And here's the part that really makes you think. This mark is not just a symbol of loyalty to a leader or regime. It's a key to society. Without it, a person is out, unable to buy their daily bread, unable to sell their goods, basically excluded from the economy. Now, connect this with the idea of biometric ID cards, the UN, an organization with global reach, proposing a system where every individual on the planet would have to be biometrically identified by 2030. Sounds practical, modern, secure, right? But it's also clearly the prelude to the mark described in Revelation. Think about the implications. In a world increasingly connected digitally, where privacy is a constantly devaluing currency, the idea of global biometric ID cards raises all kinds of red flags. What makes this even more curious is how these ideas, which seemed like pure science fiction or conspiracy theory a few decades ago, are now in the realm of plausible, even expected. 
We live in an era of exponential technological advancements where the idea of a global biometric identification system is not just possible, it's technically feasible. This movement toward a unified identification system with all its convenience and security carries with it the loss of individual autonomy. What happens when you can't opt out? What happens when your participation in society depends on your compliance with a system that has the power to track your every move, every transaction? Revelation 13, 16, 17, and the UN's proposal for biometric ID cards for every individual by 2030 are a reminder that the lines between prophecy, possibility, and political reality are becoming increasingly blurred. Establish a universal basic income. Currently, there is much discussion worldwide about having a universal basic income constantly talked about on social media, global forums, and newspapers. Two thousand years ago, the Holy Bible already predicted this event. The Bible mentions that this event of having a single currency will occur during the period it calls the Great Tribulation, with the verse found in Revelation 6. 6, which says, Then I heard what sounded like a voice among the four living creatures, saying, A quart of wheat for a day's wages, and three quarts of barley for a day's wages, and do not damage the oil and the wine. The fourth seal. Let's explore layer by layer this biblical passage. The reference to the denarius, an ancient Roman coin, and the specific amounts of wheat and barley shed light on the economic interpretation. Many scholars connect these elements to the idea of inflation and food scarcity. However, the mysterious instruction not to harm the oil and the wine adds complexity to the scenario, suggesting deeper layers of meaning. The denarius was a Roman silver coin equivalent to the average daily wage of a salaried worker. After agreeing to pay them a denarius for the day, he sent them into his vineyard. Matthew 22. Wheat, which makes bread by weight, signifies scarcity. The prophet Ezekiel speaks of God removing the food supply in Jerusalem, and in desperation they would eat food by weight. And amid great distress they would quench their thirst with a rationed amount of water, just as it is in Revelation 6. 6. Having to weigh the food. In this global single currency, each person will be able to obtain simple food for their daily work, surely not providing or not having enough protein. There is a global campaign to reduce the amount of animal protein in the world. All of these actions, the Bible pointed out centuries ago. This little food that will be available during the Great Tribulation, people will only be able to obtain it if they have a certain mark on the hand or forehead. A global currency will be promoted. The Bible and its prophecies already describes what is exactly happening today. The discussion of the world having a single universal currency. Imagine a world where it doesn't matter if a person is on one continent or another. They would be using the same currency. At first glance, this might seem like a practical idea, right? No more headaches with exchange rates. No more complications when traveling or doing international business. But then, when we start to dig a little deeper, the implications of this idea begin to unfold and they are not as simple or benign as they seem. Now think about the proposals from central banks and politicians around the world calling for a global single currency. They claim that a single currency is the way to stabilize the global economy, to facilitate international trade, to unite countries under an economic banner. But here's the thing. Who would control this currency? Who would have the power to influence monetary policies that would literally affect the entire world? The Bible already says it will be this world leader. Don't worry because Jesus will deliver us from the hour of tribulation that will come upon the world. Because you have kept my command to endure patiently, I will also keep you from the hour of trial that is going to come on the whole world to test the inhabitants of the earth. Revelation 3.10